selected for March 1st, 2022. First up, we have a presentation, Council Member Sepulveda. Where, do you know where I'm going to be? I, I'm just going to point to different ones. You're going to point? Yeah. Okay. When I come up here? No, you're good right now. Um, <laughs> you're second. I'm, I'm number two? Yes. I just, you know, I'd be like all the rest of the women in my life. Whatever you tell me to do, okay. I'm going to do it. No, no, I, no, you're good. You're two. So just point. So I, I'm going to invite all any council member that wants to uh, stand with us for Elude's um, resolution is more than welcome to come. Okay. All right. Is that everyone? Okay. Sorry, Mr. Pro Tem. Listos? Okay. A resolution honoring the life of his Hispanic community leader and journalist Eliud Trevino. Whereas the prominent Hispanic community member and leader Eliud Trevino passed away on January 23rd, 2022 at the age of 77 and Whereas Ayu Trevino was born to Mexican parents Cruz and Maria Trevino on January 10, 1945 and grew up in Odessa, Texas. And whereas he moved to Nashville in 1994 and subsequently began his successful career in media by renting three hours of studio time in the evening at WNQM, a gospel station by day. And whereas Trevino played sections of his favorite music and eventually ran a very successful daily broadcast from 6.30 p.m. to midnight on weekdays and overnight on weekends. According to a 1999 article in the Tennessean, Trevino's Radio Melodias broadcast had between 15,000 and 20,000 listeners each night and... Whereas in 1999, Trevino followed El Crucero de Tennessee, a Spanish language weekly newspaper later incorporated as El Crucero Entertainment LLC and became its president and publisher. And whereas El Crucero was one of the first sources of information for the Spanish speaking community in Tennessee. And Whereas Trevino's work and career was recognized by the Nashville Area Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and he received their Media Excellence Award in 2006 and their Ganas, uh, Ganas and Entrepreneurship Award in 2019, and... <laughs> Whereas Trevino was an active member of the community and loved to support his neighborhood church, St. Edward's in South Nashville. He served on the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights Tennessee Advisory Committee, the Mental Health Association Board, Metro Nashville's Emergency Communications District Board, and was appointed to the Mayor's Procurement Standards Board in 2000 during Mayor Bill Purcell's administration and... Whereas Trevino was a strong supporter of the, un, how do you pronounce that? Unamonos. Unamonos, a local civic organization founded by community advocate and immigration attorney Mario Ramos. Trevino also fostered the first League of United Latin American Citizens chapter in Tennessee, an organization known for its advancement of education, civil rights, health and the employment for Hispanics in the United States and and whereas Eluid Trevino is remembered as a pioneer in Spanish language radio broadcasting a supporter of many local causes and a great connector who was known for his larger than life persona and whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council honor and remember the life of Eluid Trevino now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville, Tennessee and Davidson County, uh, 
section one, the Metropolitan County hereby goes on record as honoring the life of Hispanic community leader and journalist, Eloy Trevino. Section two, the resolution shall take effect from and after this adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government and Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Um, and as you can see behind me, there are several community members in the Hispanic community that had joined us today. And we also have his wife here and I'm gonna let her say a few words. Thank you for giving the opportunity to me because everybody know who was Eliud Trevino. He has a good, happy face for everybody. No difference that there was different countries or any place. Always for the very happy. They are likes everybody. Only where I say for myself, I have an honor to be with his wife. You expecting probably in the future, he remember always for him. He always loves so much to the Spanish community. For my side, I be so happy. Anyway. We looking for something more. He continually he what he's done. David and I is for him and for everybody. That is the beginning for continue for many people, no matter the any kind. For me, I appreciate what they coming here. I expecting in the future we have much talking about. Thank you, everybody. Council member, we have a presentation from Council member Hurt. Excellent, excellent start. Where's Dr. Mack?
Right. To bring. Doc Mac, you know you got to bring be, that. You got to bring. Hot stepping coming up here. <laughs> you know you got to bring that dynamic AOB. They got to come up here. They got to oh, come up here. Oh, man, come on. <laughs> Percussionist. I mean, I'm sure he's great, but I want to see everybody. <laughs> come on, girls, come too. It's <laughs> so good to see you. All right. So you want them to play? A little bit of song, song. Right after, after yeah. we finish? Yeah. After you say your little words. Okay. All right. uh, so it gives me great pleasure to present this resolution. You know, I tell people all the time that TSU shows up and they show out. And when I tell you you showed out last night at the Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies game, I was so proud it just went all over the world with that TSU AOB. This resolution recognizes the 75th anniversary of the Tennessee State University aristocrat of bands and commemorating their participation in the 2022 Tournament of Roses Parade, whereas the Tennessee State University's marching band, better known as the Aristocrat of Bands, was first organized in the fall of 1946 at the request of the university's president, Dr. Walter S. Davis, J.D. Chavis was selected to serve as the band's first director and Whereas the band emerged from the Jazz Collegians of Tennessee State University, TSU, and was organized as a 100-piece marching band who first took the field after six weeks of practice. The band was originally called the Marching 100, but was termed the Aristocrat of Bands by a sportscaster during a National Football League game and has become well-known moniker and whereas the band marches in the traditional high-stepping style, incorporating classical jazz, contemporary, and popular repertoire in its performances. The band is led by four drum majors known as the Fantastic Four and is accompanied by the sophisticated ladies dance team and whereas a band of first the aristocrat of bands are known for achieving many historic milestones. They were the first historically black college or university, HBCU, to appear on national television during the 1955 Rams versus Bears NFL halftime show. They were the first HBCU to perform at a presidential inauguration when they played the inaugural parade of the President John F. Kennedy in 1961 and whereas they were also the first HBCU to be appointed as an official band for an FN, NFL team when they were named the official band of the Tennessee Titans in 2002. They were the first band to play on the White House lawn when they were invited by President Barack Obama to perform for the celebration of the opening of the National Museum of African American History and Culture in 2016 and... Whereas this season marks the 75th anniversary of the Aristocrat of Bands AOB as a cap to a historic season, the Aristocrat of Bands was selected to perform the 133rd Tournament of Roses Parade on January 1st, 2022. This historic parade precedes the Rose Bowl Parade and features floats, performers, and bands from across the nation. And whereas Dr. Reginald A. McDonald, 
who was the first hired, at, who was first hired as associate director of bands in 2001, has served as the director of the aristocrat of bands since 2015, and whereas is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council celebrates 75 years of excellence from the TSU aristocrat of bands and congratulates the band on their participation in the 2022 Tournament of Roses. Now, therefore, be it resolved. I'm sorry, that's, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Um, that's, all right. that's all right, that's all right. I'm gonna just go back and say this one because it's so important to know that whereas Dr. Reginald A. McDonald, better known as Prof. Mack, who was first hired as associate director of the bands in 2001, has served as the director of the aristocrat of bands since 2015. And whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council celebrates 75 years of excellence from the TSU aristocrat of bands and congratulates the band on their participation in the 2022 Tournament of Roses Parade, now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, we do present this resolution with great honor pride and celebration. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> words kind of escape me right now, but I, I just want to make sure that I accept this prestigious honor on behalf of our university, Tennessee State University, our president, Dr. Glover, all of my students, well, this is a snippet of all of them, <laughs> most of them in class right now. Um, you know, serving, I'm actually the fifth band director at Tennessee State in this long history of 75 years. And so that says a lot about consistency with leadership that I'm, I'm only the fifth band director to serve. And one of the things that we take great pride in is making sure that number one, the excellence of Tennessee State University is exuded wherever we play, but also the state of Tennessee. All of us have a part in this. And every time the aristocrat of bands perform anywhere in, in the state, the city, the world, the state of Tennessee is on display at that moment. So thank you very, very much for this prestigious honor. I just can't say enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do for Tennessee State University and the aristocrat of bands. All right, Councilmember Evans. Thank you. Uh, I would like to invite them to come back every council meeting and play the drums. That was amazing. Um, on Thursday, March the 10th, from 5 to 6.30, the Public Health and Safety Committee will have a special called meeting about addiction and drug overdoses in Davidson County. Uh, so I would love to encourage people to attend in person. If possible, it will be recorded and available on the Metro Nashville Network. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Welsh. 
Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Uh, this Thursday, the day after tomorrow at 4.30 p.m., the um, Human Services Committee will be meeting in committee room two. We'd like to invite everyone to come. We will be talking about uh, translation and interpretation services within Metro and how we can get those system-wide and also how we can uh, get in place a very robust Title VI program. So we welcome anyone who would like to come and hear the uh, discussion. And if you have any questions or things that you would like addressed during the meeting, please feel free to email me before then. That's Thursday, March 3rd at 4.30. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Toombs. Thank you, Mr. President. There are several uh, District 2 community meetings this month. On March 8th, there will be a rezoning community meeting at the North Precinct in the community room at 6 p.m. There will also be a rezoning meeting on March 10th at 6 p.m., same location, North Precinct. Our monthly community meeting is on the 22nd, same location, 6 p.m., and there is a second, uh, a part two of the meeting on the 10th on, that will be on the 24th at 6 p.m., same location. <laughs> same location, 6 p.m. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hauser. Yes, I want to make sure that everybody knows that you're going to have an opportunity to meet all of the candidates for judge on March, March 12th, sorry. It's a Saturday, March 12th from two to four at the clubhouse of Section 2 in River Plantation. That's 222, excuse me, 224 Plantation Court. So March 12, 2 to 4, 224 Plantation Court. We're inviting all of the judge candidates so you get an opportunity to meet them, ask questions, and learn what the judges do. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Benedict. Thank you, Pro Tem. So, um, sorry, I'm pulling up a couple of them here. Um, so this Thursday, the 3rd at 7 p.m., the Englewood Neighborhood Association has their monthly meeting at Isaac Litton Memorial, um, um, at the Isaac Litton Alumni Center on Gallatin Pike, right at Broadmoor. Again, Thursday, the 3rd at 7 p.m. And then the South Englewood Community Center is having a shoe drive on March the 28th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So they'll be looking for shoes. Um, and then they also are going to be having a fun day on St. Patrick's Day, not necessarily with a St. Patty's Day theme, but at noon, uh, it's open to ages 6 through 14. There's going to be a bouncy house, crafts, live music, free food, and fun. And um, th that's at the South Inglewood Community Center, 1624 Rebecca Street, 37216. Thank you, Pro Tem. Thank you, Council Member. Any other announcements? Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. I do have a community meeting to announce that I'm really excited about. This is for the historic Tulip Street Methodist Church building. If you look over into East Nashville, it's got the bell tower with the angels with the trumpets. Um, and it's a historically significant building. The bells that were from the uh, Nashville Centennial that was held at Centennial Park are at the top of that bell tower. Um, so I'm working with um, uh, a buyer who is interested in restoring that building and we have a neighborhood landmark application. Uh, I'm also working with the Metro Historic Zoning Commission. We're doing a historic interiors overlay that will help preserve some of the interior features of that sanctuary. And we are having a community meeting about that on Thursday, March the 9th, or I'm sorry, on Mar Wednesday, March the 9th at, uh, at Tulip Street there at 518 Russell Street and hope that folks will come out and listen to that presentation and give us our feedback before it comes before planning. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Council Member. Any other announcements? Council Member Gamble. Thank you. I would like to announce that uh, there will be a District 3 community meeting on March 8th at 5.30 p.m. at the Minerva Foundation on Whites Creek Pike. Um, for more information, go to my Facebook page, Jay Gamble or council, and also you may email me, but it'll be March 8th at 5.30, and it's to discuss um, potential uh, a proposed development at uh, Wise Creek Park and Briley Parkway. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Any other announcements? Well, next announcement period, council member Toombs, 6 p.m., same location. Council meeting starts in five minutes. <laughs> 